Now, I'm going to apply what we talk about this morning, apply it to how God speaks to people and how we speak to people. You have to raise up your voice more. If they have problem hearing. Yeah, say, so speak louder. It's a better they come there are many chairs. Okay. Can you come to the front? Sit to the front. Tell them. Tell them. They want me up. They want us up. That's where we can hear them. They can hear us well. Then you might move forward more. I come when you use an anon equity in the I didn't have a teacher of one. Okay. Now, um, I want to say this. Many people see the law of God. The Bible does have the law and the gospel, but then very often they saw the law of God. I want to advance you. I want to make a good man. I want to make a good man. And they say the law of God in a way very harsh to people. And they think that when they are very harsh, then they can change people. For instance, people say, you have to repent. You have sinned and God doesn't like you. Now, sometimes people talk like this, like even, you, you don't love God so much. They may not be very harsh. But it conveys a feeling of saying they are no good. I want to show you from the Bible how God talks to people when they sin. How God turned people around. Okay, Luke chapter 22, verse 32. That when Peter was about to deny Jesus on that night, and Jesus said to him, But I pray for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Now, Peter has followed Jesus for three years. If we were Jesus, we might talk to Peter like this. We might say, well, you have followed me three years, you see all my miracles, and you know who I am. But you're going to deny me tonight, and how can you do that? No, no, you going to now we might have a tendency to say very harsh words. Peter. Let me ask you, when people talk harshly to you, I know a pastor, he told me, he said, every time after I preach, my wife will always complain about my sermon. Let me ask you, if the wife complained to her husband about 
his sermon, does it help him? And the pastor was discouraged. Now, what the wife said might be true. But when the wife uses the law to motivate her husband to change, or criticize her or criticize him, it caused him to lose faith and strength. Now here, when Peter was about to deny Jesus, Jesus said, I pray for you so that you will not lose your faith. So when Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him three times at night, he did not pick Peter up. He did not pick Peter up. But he prayed to God, Oh God, help Peter. And he knows that God will help Peter. So when he told Peter, I pray for you, so that you won't lose your faith, and then you will be strengthened, and then when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. So here, Jesus trusted Peter. I'm going to lift you up. I'm used, I will use you to strengthen your brothers. So you see that when Jesus speaks, he gives people hope. He doesn't tear people down. That he always gives people strength and hope. So to, so to motivate people to change. And then in Matthew 9, 20. Nine, Matthew 9, 22. Now the woman had bleeding for 12 years. And she had no hope she has lost her money. And she heard that Jesus was coming. But she was unclean. She's not supposed to touch people. But she wanted to be healed and she didn't want the people to know. So she, so she mixed up in the crowd to go to Jesus. And then just touch the garment of Jesus. And then he would, she was healed. And then Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, everyone is pressing against you. Why do you ask who touched you? And Jesus says, someone has touched me because there's power that leaves my body. And then the woman knew that, that she cannot hide herself. So she admitted that she has touched Jesus. Now Jesus could say to her, Shame on you. 
You are unclean. Why didn't you touch all the people around you? And why didn't you touch me? I'm going to punish you. But Jesus did not talk like that. He said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Now, when he said, take heart, means be comforted. Or have courage. So here Jesus knew that her heart was afraid. She cares about her feeling. He, no, I mean he. Jesus cared about her feeling. And Jesus paid attention to her feelings. And so he said, take heart, don't worry. And then he called her daughter. To show that she is really a daughter of him. She is very precious. So Jesus said, daughter, take heart, don't worry. Your faith has healed you. When you just hold on to Jesus, just faith. Hold on to Jesus, you'll be healed. So when Jesus talked to her, it's, it's words of comfort. Now even Jerusalem and Israel has rejected Jesus all these years, rejected God all these years. Don't, don't and Jesus said to Jerusalem when he was about to enter Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You have killed the prophets and you have stoned to death the people I've sent to you. I want to gather you like a hen, gather the chicken. But you are not willing. Now Israel has rejected God many, many years. Now Jesus could say something like this. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You have rejected the prophets and killed the prophets. I'm going to punish you. You have no hope. But Jesus did not say that. He said, I have tried to gather you like a hen. The hen has love for the chicken and to gather you. Because God has a lot of love even for the sinners. Even when Israel rejected God, when Jesus went there, he did not, you know, just give them no hope, but he gave them hope. I have tried to gather you like a hen. The hen will protect the chicken. Now in this passages we see what? Now one teaching of mine is called the God's Nature Bible Study and God's Nature Preaching Method, which I will talk about in these few days. In these passages, we can see God's heart, His nature. God's heart toward Peter is like this. Even when you deny me, I care about you. I pray for you so that you have faith. 
I help you to be restored and then you can help other people. So Jesus could accept Peter when he denied Jesus. And then Jesus said to the woman with the bleeding, Take heart, daughter. It shows that Jesus has a lot of feeling toward people. He has feeling toward you. That's why when we pray, we can experience his joy and his love. Because Jesus, God, is full of joy and love. So when we pray, we can experience his love. God is a beautiful God. He's a loving God. And he talks to each one of you. My son, my daughter, don't worry. I care about you. I care about your burdens. I help you. I will strengthen you. I'm with you. And then even when he talked to Israel, he could have said, you have no hope. But Jesus said, I have tried to gather you like a hand together the chicken. And then the hand has love for the chicken. And God has a love even to the rebellious children. Now in this passage, we really see the acceptance of God. How he cares about people, he cares about their feelings, he comfort people. Now even in the Old Testament, he rebuked the Israelites a lot. In Isaiah chapter 1, this is the heaviest passage in the Bible. To rebuke the Israelites for the sin. You go home and read Isaiah chapter 1, it's very, very heavy. That you have been punished from the head to the toe. And a nation of sin. But then what did he say in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18? Though your sins be like crimson, it will be white as snow. So when they come to God, God will forgive them. God really has a very broad heart. Now when Jesus rebuked the disciples for lack of faith, he did not say, well, you have no hope because you have no faith. But he said to them, when you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So we see that God always gives people hope. In the heart of God, there is a lot of strong feelings toward us. He really care about us and loves us from the bottom of his heart. So I hope in the future when we read the Bible, we will always look for the grace of God. And then be motivated by the love of God to obey Him. 
hanyuma tujye dushishikarizwa n'urukundo rw'Imana tujye dushishikarizwa n'urukundo rw'Imana kwikunda but let me tell you many people talk to many Christians talk to other people even when pastors preachers abantu benshi bavugana n'abandi bantu cyane cyane iyo abasumba barimo kwigisha we don't talk like Jesus some people may talk like this abandi bashora kuvuga bashya you are sinner you have no hope if you don't repent God will punish you or, or sometimes we just say to people uh, you know like your wife, wife or husband sometimes we talk to the wife, wife or husband like this I don't like you you don't listen to me you don't help me. Now all these words make people feel very depressed, unhappy. Now how can we apply what how Jesus talk, how God talks to our daily talking? Now many people are encouraged to people to pray like this. They encourage other people to pray like this. They will say, how, how many hours, how long do you pray every day? Do you pray much? <coughs> if you don't pray, God will not hear you. You don't pray, you'll suffer. So you have to pray more. Now, all this saying is accusing the people and telling the people you have to pray now it's true we have to pray but we can say it like this please remember how I say it God loves us very much he has a lot of blessings waiting for you anytime we pray to him God is very happy he's praying to me I'm going to bless him so anytime you talk to God God is happy and God will bless you and he will strengthen your life and he will raise you up even though the problems don't go away right away when you pray but God has a plan to help you through this difficulty. Now, have you noticed a difference? I first talk about the grace of God, the love of God. And how when we pray, God is very happy to hear our prayer and he will bless us. So, if we don't know how to pray, we just say, God, I don't know how to pray. Please teach me how to pray. Please open my heart. Help me to have a close relationship with you. And God is very happy. So the way I motivate people is by God's grace and give them hope like Jesus did when you have faith like a mustard seed you can move the mountain and then Jesus said you know God knows your need before you pray so when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, righteousness all these things will be added to you and the Father will not give you stone when you ask for bread. And the Father will not give you a snake when you ask for fish. So Jesus was telling the people, 
Jesus knows our need before we pray. Jesus has a plan to bless us. So when we pray, he is very happy. And he knows this person loves him. And he'll bless you. Now, have you noticed the difference? Now, to encourage people to read the Bible, some people will say, you don't read the Bible, how can you grow in spiritual life? You don't read the Bible, you have no strength. So you have to read the Bible every day. Now this is true. But then he's motivating him to change by the law. But we can tell people God has many promises locked in the Bible. In the Bible, there are many keys to the blessings of God. When you hold on to these promises, the whole life will be changed. Now you notice when I talk, I always hold on to the Bible where I get the faith and the strength. So I encourage people and say the Bible has so many promises, so many blessings. When you read, God will pour these blessings to your to you. And a Bible can change your life and your mind. You notice my words is always positive because I'm full of the word of God in my heart. So I encourage people with the, you know, with the blessings of God and with the word of God is so wonderful. When you read it, it will change your life. Now, when some people encourage people to serve God, they might say, you have to serve God. We have to bring the people in here. Uh, and, you know, if not, you can be punished by God. But instead we can say this. You know, Jesus said if you give a cup of cold water to a little one, you by no means lose your reward. So Jesus was saying, any little thing you do for other people, you will not lose the reward. God is very happy. Even when you smile with someone and greet someone, God is very happy. Anything, you know, when you bring someone to Jesus, God is very, very happy. And God, God has a great plan for your life. For each one of you. For each one of you. One day you go to heaven, you discover God's plan. It's so great. It's so great. It's so great. But many people will say, But on earth, I didn't know God's plan is so great. I thought it's just so small. So if we had known that God's plan is so great, 
ariko kuva mumenye ku mugambi w'Imana yonza kumenya ku mugambi w'Imana wari munini and God can lift our life up to a high level ko Imana isobora kutuzamura mu rwego rwo hejuru and God will provide for us so we can serve God ko Imana yashobora gano kutuwa byinshi tukayikorera God will give us strength to serve God Imana ikaduha imbaraga zo kuyikorera then we will enjoy it enjoy serving God nate twakushimishwa no gukorera Imana let me tell you before experience the holy spirit I find it very hard to raise up people to serve God. But now when I encourage people, you know, you can do great things for God and God can use you greatly. And then I raise up missionaries and pastors and people who are willing to pray for people. They see that the life can go higher and higher and higher. And I hope you all see that your life can go higher and higher and higher. And I hope you all see that your life can go higher and higher and higher. And I hope you all see that your life can go higher and higher. Are you satisfied with what you're doing now? Do you want to go higher? 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 Who can help you to go higher? Ninde abu fasha kurusha kuzamuka. Who? Ninde. Jesus. Yes. And can he do it? Kana ravi shoboi. Can he do it? Yeah, we saw that. So if every day, if every day you're filled with the love of God, filled with the joy of the Lord, and when people see you preach, they say, I want to be like him. I like to be living in Jesus like that. I want to enjoy life like that. Isn't that much better than saying you have to serve God? You didn't serve God, you didn't serve God enough. Which one is better? When we let people see the grace of God and how we can use our life we all can have hope do you feel encouraged? You know, now I see that God is using me higher and higher. Not because of my talents. All these teachings were given to me by God. When we learn to pray to God with our heart, God will guide you. The more you enjoy God, you help people to enjoy God. They will like God more and they want to serve God. And you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And after the meal, I'll talk about how you can refill the Holy Spirit any time. So you have the love of God, the grace of God. You have the power of God. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Bible. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to speak positive words and help us to receive the blessings of God. You always speak positively to us. You always give us hope. Help us to take this hope and hold on to Jesus and rely on Jesus and Jesus will raise up our life to bless more people 
And also, Lord, please help us to speak words of grace. Always blessing people. Always giving hope to people. Thank you, Jesus. We can strengthen people. We can build up people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.